Welcome everyone. It's a special program today because we are going to talk about uh, the best moments of 2019. There are so many best moments. This was a challenging task for Judith and me <laughs> to put this program together. <laughs> But this is a great experience anyway, because you have a chance to collect these pearls of wisdom from the whole year. You have a chance to reconnect and relieve the best moments with other participants. You have a chance to get the flavor of what awakened mind people are like. So that's why I really like this program. We did similar program. You remember after the very first year, we had the first year anniversary where uh, I also tried to put the best moments together and introduce community uh, to each other and especially to those who were not very active during the whole year. So this is similar program. Maybe I'll repeat myself a little bit, but I think every word is worth saying. <laughs> That was my logic and principle while preparing for today's. I would like to say my hello. Um, here we are at the end of a, another year. Um, I look back and am in wonderment that the Mind Mirror 6 was uh, on the market only in 2019. And that's about the time that the Institute for the Awakened Mind website went up. And uh, we had the opportunity to begin this community. Um, but I would like to say uh, a special thanks to Oksana, who has really made this community possible by the work that she does with the webinars. And, the, you know, she, she does everything. I mean, she does the graphics that you see on the page. She does the... Um, announcements she sends it all out and she edits the videos and uploads them to the web website and um and it's not even just uh that she facilitates community it's that she facilitates unity <laughs> by um putting the webinar uh programs up that have to do with self-training and how to use the mind mirror all of that is oksana's work and uh, so thank you, Oksana, for your work all year long and every other year and for this program as well, which you have yourself put together. Thank you and welcome, everybody. I hope you enjoy what we uh, uh, conspired to present. Uh, and each and every one of you is featured in this program. So thank you for being here. Well, thank you, Judith. It's my pleasure. And yes, you're absolutely right. Everyone is featured. It's like a documentary, but documentary about yourself. <laughs> we'll be there with Judith too, but you are the main, main actors. Okay, I'm going to share screens and start with presentation. Just to remind you that this November was four years since we had our programs online. And I think it's already you know something to celebrate <laughs> because we keep going and as Judith mentioned it started with just two of us and after I finished the first two seminars with Judith here in Australia I realized I want to stay in touch with uh, other practitioner trainees with other cell trainers I want to know what other people are doing, what problems they have and how they solve them. And of course, I wanted to share my experiences. And that's how I suggested Judith to start the webinar program. Partially, I have uh, to say thank you to the system of health management and Dmitry Shuminkov. We have a program with him who also inspired me to go online. Uh, because uh, it was his idea that relationships are the key to our health and happiness. And it was his idea that if you don't have certain qualities or skills and you need to develop them, you want to draw them into your life, uh, the way is connect with people who already have it. So I thought this must be the best way to do it. Just get in touch with Awake in mind people with other practitioners who have more experience than me. And I should also mention that this is a more than one plus one thing. It's energies of people who come. They, I think we all stimulate each other. It's very stimulating. It's like an energy vortex. Every single program 
and it helps you to stay in touch it helps you to stay together because really it's very difficult to bring people together who are scattered around the globe so online is probably the only option and as i mentioned anybody practitioner mind mirror owner self-trainer everyone interested in meditation and biofeedback is welcome uh, just to remind us like who, who we are who comes here who is drawn to our work we have psychologists we have psychotherapists coaches medical doctors nurses social workers we always and often have people coming from alternative health areas healers acupuncturists we have musicians singers photographers artists writers i mean people of creative professions of course we have teachers speakers and authors and we have people coming from technical and scientific background, engineers, mathematicians, software developers, and entrepreneurs. You can see that we come from different backgrounds, but what do they, we have in common? Over the years, I noticed, and uh, someone in early days uh, said that this community represents the best people in the world. So I can say, yes, what you will find that I wouldn't say you or they, I'll say we. <laughs> You'll see that what's common about all our members, it's intelligence, creativity. You'll find people have multi-talents, lots of talents, they're deep, with sense of humor, with awakened minds and coherent hearts, uh, which is also important with passion, with great wisdom and experience to share. And I want to say today, thank you Thank you to all of you who made this year, this program possible. Just a few numbers to remind that we have over 200 active members from all over the world who join us despite of time challenges. I probably am on the biggest time challenge or one of the people with the biggest time challenge. <laughs> How do I say 200? When I do our newsletters and mail outs, I can see how many people open and read the newsletters. So basically, this is a regular stable um, number. We have over 30 VIPs, uh, at least this year. And I'm very thankful to all of you because you help us make it happen. Let me just add in about the VIPs for those of you with new mind mirrors and may not uh, make this connection that the VIPs uh, are people who have paid $150 uh, for free access to all of the webinars during the year as well as already recorded webinars it makes things a lot easier for people because uh, then you have instant access at all times we had 11 great programs we had a great program with uh, David Fairweather the psychotherapist from Canada, which is called Winning Mindset, with a lot of helpful tips about achieving your goals and what may stand on your way about your perception and beliefs. We had a great program in February on Manifest Your Desires. And I think in light of the new year coming soon and knowing that most of people on earth, they make new year resolutions, this is a very good program to be reminded of and you'll see quite a few cuts from this program which I think are relevant. Then uh, there were great programs uh, fresh from the field superconscious and digging into mind mirror data superconscious too where you could see Judith's work with the Monroe Institute and her research on basically gamma because uh, from what i learned these programs they mainly contribute to helping you of course go into awakened mind and especially sustaining alpha with eyes open plus there will be lots of participants uh, with gamma and of course with the unusual extraordinary experience of high states so this is not just about subjective experience this is also about data analysis with the mind mirror ballistas so they're worth watching if you are interested then we had programs open forum one and two for anybody with the mind mirror who had uh, questions and wanted to ask them 
or who had a chance to ask them and find some resolution and advice again on technical issues, how mind mirror works, on uh, awakened mind theory, how the training works, what patterns are like and what experience they associated with. So, and of course, lots of technical things, how, how to uh, run self-training program, how to uh, run analysis and differentiate between different training levels. So th these are two good programs to watch. Then we had a program on healing, which is um, one of the favorite topic, I should say, to our community, because I guess everyone comes here for some type or kind of healing and personal evolution. And then we had a program self trainers speak. It was again a great chance to hear more from our self trainers which doesn't happen that often, but uh, again, it's good to see and hear what's going on. Uh, there were useful tips, especially on how to meditate and how challenging meditation can be and how to work on personal transformation with awakened mind meditations. And then there was a program about truth, wisdom and one-pointed goals. This was a great program about goals, <laughs> which uh, took us a bit further. Uh, again, back to meditation, back to the very core, you know, what is true, what is not true. And how do we find wisdom? Where do we find wisdom? Is it our wisdom or not? And then there was a great program where we hosted Andrea Pennington with a great presentation about her own story of how to work with chronic illness, depression and trauma through reconnection to the essential self. So I can highly recommend all of these programs because they are worth watching. And thank you all again for inspiring us to continue and inspiring us to bring more and more interesting topics. And of course, in the end, we'll, I'll mention the topics we prepared for the next year. Of course, this is tentative plan, but to me, it's still very exciting. So I uh, put together uh, all the numbers and realized that uh, including our instructional videos, uh, we have over 70, I think, to be precise, 72 programs at the moment. So it's a lot of hard work <laughs> over the last four years of putting it together and a lot of hours of editing. But I'm very glad that we have one place where all this wisdom and knowledge can be accessed. So uh, you will find all videos, uh, not necessarily on our YouTube channel, because some videos aren't listed, so you won't find them there. You'll find them here in our video gallery. And in the uh, bottom left corner now on the screen, you can see the address. So it's, of course, on our I am events tilde. WS website uh, under videos section. And of course, uh, for those of you who paid and became our VIP members, uh, you can easily navigate and scroll through all the videos. I should say there are tons of free videos and all instructional videos, of course, and all videos for new users, they're always free. So you can just navigate through the page and find lots of answers. Now I would like you, I invite you to reconnect with ourselves and uh, how I called it powerful woo-woo crowd and relieve brightest, touching, inspiring, blissful, insightful, transformational moments. And I would add in a scientific woo-woo. We're not just up there in the clouds. We've got some science with us, don't we? Okay, yeah, exactly. So I can promise you that this will be informative and touching. Relax a little bit and tune in to the vibration of the speakers. Try to get the message that they're trying to deliver and relieve this uh, mystery of life or uh, this magic twist of destiny, the moments of bliss and despair and deep insights. Is it too woo-woo or too sciencey? <laughs> Not for this crowd. This, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> this, this crowd can, this is a full spectrum crowd that can go all the way from cognitive to, uh, and I don't, you know, I laugh and call it woo-woo, but, um, a lot of the people on this webinar are very familiar with non-ordinary states of consciousness. So this is very much in their uh, in lingo. Well, you guys are a pretty powered up group of people. <laughs> 
So this was just generic introduction of us. Here is our gratitude block, where I would like to thank you all our special guests and speakers. And since our first program in January this year was Winning Mind with David Fairweather, this is a fun program as well because David is very charismatic, I should say, personality. If you like it, I invite you to explore more. You can always go to his website, download his free meditations, uh, download his book. And here is a little fragment from this program. Let's do a fun experiment for a second. I mean, we have we've got a few people in the room, right? We've got at least okay. a few people. Um, this is really, really quick, and it's something straight out of the book. I'm going to demonstrate what I'd like everyone to do, and it really will be less than a minute to do this, just to give everyone, everyone an experience of this. But I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes so it will look like that, don't do it just yet. And then I'm gonna ask you to say a word. Now the word I want you to say will be a color. I want you to choose red or blue. And then you just kind of say that word over and over to yourself. And it would sound like this if you moved your lips, but you're not going to. Blue, 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 just blue, blue. And then I'm gonna ask you to count of three to keep saying it but when i get to three immediately open your eyes and look around the room and notice what draws your attention okay be open to drawing what draws your attention a little like the way i choose a book when i'm traveling look on my bookshelf i go with what pops out to me it always ends up being the right book so if we could do that now everyone close your eyes and then say that word over and over to yourself in your head and don't worry about what I'm saying. Just keep saying that word. Scream it. Whisper it. Say it softly, loudly, over and over. And keep saying it over and over. I'm going to count from one to three on the count of three and not before. Immediately open your eyes and dart your eyes around the room. You can just see what draws to your attention. So you keep screaming and saying that word now as one, two, three. And what did you notice? Blue, blue, blue. <laughs> Is that the word you were saying? How about you, Patty? Um, I had picked the color green, of course, so I saw everything green in the room, the plants, the leaves, the trees outside. Yeah. Yeah, that really works, doesn't it? Yeah. And it wasn't a lengthy programming process. I just no. basically impressed the importance of the color upon your unconscious mind and then open your eyes and see what you're drawn to. So this is speaking, I suppose, to conditioning. Yeah. What goes in is what we perceive what goes out. Well, again, so, the stamp collector would have trained themselves to notice rare stamps. And that would be a conditioning process. It would be a habit. It would form a habit. And that our brain would then have the habit of noticing the things that we habitually see. And then hmm. bring it back. That's a wonderful demonstration of a, a immensely uh, central and important concept. Uh -huh. that of Imagine course, how it works for victims that always see them see other people as oppressing them and as problematic. In order to maintain their role of victim, it's incredibly important to their psyche that they notice perpetrators. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And that would be a habit, like optimism and pessimism. Gary and his wife, Donna, they're very passionate about awakened mind work. And they're the one trained by Anna. And uh, with probably lots of, lots of, lots of experience with the mind mirror. Historically, starting from, I don't know which model of mind mirror they started with, Judith, maybe you know. <laughs> But they're still continuing their work and they're uh, working a lot with uh, EFT and Dawson Church. So Gary is a quite frequent participant of our programs and he often has very good questions to ask and very good comments. Would you like to add anything, Judith? Only that uh, Gary is the driver toward the saline electrodes, which is why you see him with uh, the old Mind Mirror 3 headset on their uh, headband. We appreciate all of the innovations that he leads us to. The pattern editor was one. He wanted a pattern editor, and Steve Clark did that, and it's now included in the Mind Mirror Features Pack. So valued, valued member of this community. Both Oksana has here that they're a passionately dedicated couple, both practicing the lifestyle they teach for better health, compassion, and enlightenment, and that's absolutely true. Teach in Europe, France, great contributions to this work.
But the whole point of the awakened mind is it's not a nirvana-like destination. The awakened mind merely says that there's an open flow of awareness from beta to delta and back that enables you to be awake enough to yourself to do the cleanup work. You certainly can train with just the musical cues, but if you know that you have a block in consciousness, listen to Anna's, one of Anna's meditations or one of mine, let it guide you down there so that you can address the block, clear the block. So certainly you can listen to the musical cues and um, train the state to access the content, or you can listen to a guided meditation to access the content to train the state but when you're doing them both at the same time which is what practitioners do then that's a powerhouse so that's going to get you that relaxed uh, alpha to externalize so you're not just calm and flowing in meditation you're calm and flowing in all of life which is the goal uh, of the mind mirror in the first place i have often referred to the awakened mind as the gateway into flow, that it doesn't necessarily create flow, but it's the op that open door that allows you to go into flow if you're in a situation uh, that is, you know, creative and challenging and has one of those triggers uh, for flow. And uh, another thing that I, I don't think we've talked about before is that I found that I, can access uh, or train accessing uh, alpha through different senses. The different senses, depending on the individual, will produce more alpha, particularly eyes open alpha. Uh, so if I'm focusing on hearing, I produce a lot of eyes open alpha. Uh, whereas my daughter, who's visual, will produce a lot of uh, you know visual alpha if she's focusing internally on on something. Whereas uh, as Garth was saying, that probably if he's a sort of kinesthetic alpha, when he's moving and doing Tai Chi, which I also do, uh, you develop more alpha because he's got that kinesthetic. It can vary from one person to another as to what their dominant sense is. Some people use all of them, of course, and that's sort of the goal is that we're using all of our senses together to produce alpha. We see another slide again with Andrea because, as I mentioned before, she did a great program for us. Andrea, it's a pleasure to have you with us. I really enjoyed your program, and I think uh, attunement meditation just in itself, it's very brilliantly put together meditation that can help lots of lots of people with uh, stress, with addiction, with all kinds of pro problems. So I highly advise everyone to watch our program and then follow up the links that you will see in program description and research more on that. Yes, there will be a little fragment, another one that I personally really resonated with of Andrea sharing her moments of despair and insight. <laughs> and I met someone in Saint-Tropez in the south of France and mentioned that I was a jazz singer. And he said, oh, I'm going to get you in. You're going to come and you're going to sing in the hottest spot in Saint-Tropez. And I wasn't going to back down because I was like, oh, it's so glamorous. You know, yeah, I'm going to do this. So I'm up there, you know, in this DJ booth and there's hundreds of people. And it's just, I mean, everything just seems so chic and so beautiful. And I'm singing my heart out. And it was the first time in years that I felt this like love a sense of flow and bliss between me and the audience. And it was like, they didn't know who I was. They hadn't read my bio, but I felt like they were seeing me and, and responding to the real me. And so I left in this sort of ecstatic haze. I got back to my hotel room and the, the morning when I woke up, I, I literally was like, what just happened? Did that just happen? How did that happen? And it was like, I got this sense of, just wonder. And then it hit me that in two days, I'd have to go back, back to America, back to all that responsibility with the TV station, with my patients, with all of these doctors who were then at this time, at this point working for me. And that's when I felt this like strangling feeling, this darkness of depression. 
that got so intense that I, I called out to God to take my life because I just, I couldn't imagine going back and living that life anymore, especially after I'd had that taste of whatever that was. And I was crying. Um, I flung myself onto the bed, shaking, and I called out to God and said, take it, take my life, take my business, my body. I don't know what I'm doing with it. And as I flung myself onto the bed, just sobbing and shaking, my body seemed to melt into the bed and I felt like I was one with the bed. And then I had this, this bright, blinding light. And I remember kind of thinking, okay, how can the sun get any brighter in Khan? I mean, come on. And I'm like looking for the source of this light, but it wasn't out there, it was in here. And that's when I felt myself being drawn into the light and transported to the other side. And that's when I thought God was like answering my prayer. When I said, take my life, I, that's what it felt like. And as I got over to the other side, I was in once again, this feeling of intense bliss, just pure joy and love and calm and bliss. And I could sense that there was this presence with me. I never saw it. I don't know if it was an angel or what, but I saw my entire life flash in front of me, like, like people talk about, like in an instant, every scene played out and I could understand in one instant why I was depressed. It was as if I could see how every one of the decisions I'd made had led me very logically to being totally depressed and unhappy with my life. And it was as if this being was communicating to me. And I, I kind of remember asking like, so you mean I could have made different choices? Like I can choose, <laughs> which seems so silly now, of course, free will, right? Um, but I had this feeling like, oh, well, if I get to choose, then um, I'll go back. And that's when I had a new vision of me walking along the, the quasette, um, the boardwalk, right on the Mediterranean. I was holding hands with a child, which to me seemed crazy because at that point I was just about 35 years old, single, didn't think I was gonna have any children. I knew that I was living in France in this vision. I was singing professionally. The last thing was a little weird because I saw that I was healing with my hands. And that's when I was like, really God, you're gonna make me a woo-woo doctor? But I was kind of like in this moment of surrender. So I was like, okay, well, everything else looks good. And that's when I came back into my body. And all of the darkness, the depression, the anxiety was gone. I prepared another special thank you slide to Sylvia. She wasn't official main speaker, but she was a great contributor to our Manifest Your Desires program. Sylvia is as I know, friend of Judith, I personally enjoyed everything she said because she's very intuitive and that kind of person that holds the vibration of what she's talking about. It's very gentle, loving vibration. And of course, it's always interesting to hear and learn more about the messages from the other side. So Judith, if you'd like to add something. Just that she's a wonderful, wise woman who did what so many people would love to do and often don't have the courage to do, is that she was uh, head of the international writing te uh, team for Clinique Cosmetics, uh, a fabulous writer, uh, and uh, she was paid a great deal of money, uh, but still leaving her job with a small nest egg, she took off into this intuitive realm and amazing. She has clients all over the place, all over the world. She's very grounded and very high at the same time, a beautiful person. And as Oksana said, uh, 
if you watch that program, you'll probably be impressed with a lot of the things that she says and a lovely voice. I invite you to watch a fragment from a Manifest Your Desires program where Sylvia talks about authentic desires and how important it is to be able to discern uh, where you've been programmed by society, by promotion, or where it's your divine soul's plan. And then her own story shows and proves how divine plan works. So from creative field, she ended up doing what she is doing, being intuitive counselor. By way of introduction, Sylvia is an intuitive reader and works a lot with people who have sub programs running that are um, causing difficulties in their lives. You there, Sylvia? Yes, a lot of my work is about the alignment that so many of you are speaking about, that to me, it's very important if I'm working with a desire or something I want to manifest, to know if that is an authentic desire. And if it is that it's in line with my highest and best good or my soul's divine plan. And in terms of authentic, there are so many belief structures that we buy into or take upon us or interfere with our soul's divine plan. It's important to know that which to be able to discern which ones are authentic in other words, coming from me and not some program that I've been running or something that's the record keepers often talk about the many programs that are broadcast through popular entertainment. And uh, I think as most of you are aware there, it's important to know if we have receptors to them, to programs that are limiting or belief systems such as I am not worthy or I am disconnected from, or I am not connected to God or my divine, the part of me that is divine or my higher self or however you want to look at it. Um, I can also introduce a, a concept that you might find interesting from that has come up in many Akashic Records readings, particularly recently, and that is the concept of, of sovereignty and restoring one's divine right as a free will being and a spark, of, a spark of the divine, to have that direct connection with the highest source that we can imagine. And this is something that, as, as Judy, I'm sure you know, Edgar Cayce said was our birthright as human beings. Um, Did you feel as, as a child that you were connected to what it is that makes you feel alive and joyful now? In terms of professionally, I really wasn't connected at all and didn't have any idea that I would end up being an intuitive reader or someone who speaks about connecting with one's higher wisdom or, and I love the phrase, quantum sea of light. That, that definitely resonates with me. It was a mystery to me until I started delving into deeper levels of the mind and doing past life regression and things like that. And, um, you know, I'm grateful to, to Judy for what she's, many of these explorations of deeper levels of my mind, well, she was the guide. And uh, probably... With the mind mirror, only with the mind mirror. With the mind mirror and probably, uh, and probably a high priestess in uh, previous lives because... Um, and just as an aside, I'm finding that the record keepers will speak about um, when they're talking about someone's past life abilities, they will often remind people that the functions that are filled by mystics or shamans or, or therapists or uh, scientific, uh, scientific practitioners, they were called different things in different societies. So not to get tripped up on the, on the terminology, um, but most societies have always benefited from someone who was a wisdom keeper or a truth teller. It doesn't surprise me that you didn't go to the intuitive possibilities uh, for your life as a child, 
not only because of your environment, but if I may say, and if I remember correctly, you were persecuted in past lives for that. Yes. And, and that you had to do a lot. You had to really work through because you had this urge as long as I've known you, which is the 20 years I've been up here in the Northeast and always had this drive to be an intuitive reader. But here you were on the international writing team for a major cosmetics company and making a lot of money in Manhattan. Yeah. And, um, and you really had to uh, work through all of that past life trepidation. Um, so it doesn't surprise me that you didn't find it in childhood. Yes. <laughs> Your ego would have clamped down on that in a split second said, Oh, um, been there burned <laughs> or whatever. Absolutely. You know? Um, it's, it's interesting what Bob said, because I will often, you know, say burned at the stake once too often. It's <laughs> 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 the way I phrase it. Yeah, yes. So I did have to find my way through a lot of that and, uh, release it and uh, forgive myself. And that's something that is, uh, as you all know, such a powerful technique, forgiveness. Um, and then I also will note that since I was in a creative field as an advertising writer, that I think being a creative, so to speak, uh, even though I was in the corporate world for many years, uh, I think that that gave me the impetus or it sort of opened the pathway to the deeper mind, the creative well. And going there, even though it was for a more superficial cosmetic approach, um, it, still, it still was a pathway. And I found that I enjoyed following that, you know, even in recreational reading, uh, sci-fi, fantasy, things of that nature, uh, stimulating the imagination. And I'm, I'm now coming back to the fact that our imagination is such uh, a vital part of who we are and how we create our reality. And now we go into our uh, active participants. And I want to say a special thank you to John Farin, who is another medical doctor working in the emergency department for sharing the light from within. And hopefully one day, John, you'll do another program for us because you have lots of knowledge to share. Before I went to medical school, my first contact with absent healing was with a bunch of Rosicrucians in the Amwark tradition out of San Jose, but it was in Toronto back in the late 70s, early 80s, when I was in residency, is somebody um, did an exercise that influenced my practice for you know the 30 plus years I was in the ER. And it was that I could, I could enjoy pleasure evoking the energy in my patients, in my hands, in my being, in the same way as I can be uh, trying to generate energy. And one of the presuppositions that came out of that, which is, you know, echoed, as I think I mentioned before in NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, is that everybody has the light within, which is where the healing comes from. I'd like to say a special thank you to Steve Jones uh, for his great comments and his relentless search of truth. I prepared a very nice fragment from, I think, a couple even of our programs where Steve demonstrates passion for meditation and his insights about awakened mind training and awakened mind and evolved mind states. Just thank you, Steve. Uh, you're bringing things back to the core, and you often do that. And we thank you for being with us and your ability to do that. The the one on on Cage List, I felt was a big breakthrough for me. I don't remember what number it is now, but it was where you can bring together opposites into a unity. Th things that are inconsistent, you bring them together to a, a consistent understanding. And so I felt like I have, have reached that state several times because there's, from a philosophical perspective, there were these clashes in my mind. Should I believe this or should I believe that? And there seem to be opposites. There's no reconciliation that was apparent. But in a higher state, then then it was apparent there were only opposites because of the way I was looking at it. 
kind of like in quantum physics where an electron is both a wave and a particle and those in, in, in to our ordinary understanding are not possible to be at both at the same time yet in in the world that they are actually it is actually both at the same time so that's the one that made the biggest impression on me yeah and that really makes absolute perfect sense because um, the dissolution of the difference uh, between subject and object disappears when you get into those higher states it's not you and me it's all one it's all about oneness and then realizing or ex and experiencing that when you're in a more transcendent state a higher state of consciousness that there are no contradictions it's just you know, there are no black and whites. It's just, uh, there are just momentary transient variations, but it's all the same thing. We're one with everything and everything is one with us. Judith, may I add a word? Please. I would assume, Steve, that, uh, that it's most likely was evolved mind pattern because, you know, the main difference, I want just to emphasize the main difference between awakened mind and the evolved mind pattern for me and whoever you know I received feedback from and main difference is that as you can visually remember evolved mind is the one without bottlenecks so literally it's kind of this is the uniting pattern and uh, I like uh, to use uh, kind of my own wording and say uh, it allows you also to change the perspective you know kind of zoom out and before you were either on one side of the mountain or another side of the mountain but then you kind of you switch you zoom out you shift your perspective so that you're able to include like from top of the mountain you will be able to see both sides or kind of you'll see all around the mountain really you'll kind of embrace it all you're not uh, kind of cleaning here, cleaning there, and that also uh, implies uh, symmetry, as we know. You know, evolved mind implies you are utilizing both hemispheres. And uh, on subjective level, the principal difference for me would be awakened mind is more active, of course, because you kind of it's for good decision making, for for fast things, for ideas, for. Uh, an evolved mind is more about this sense of unity and peace. It's kind of, it's more still state from where you kind of, you don't really want to go anywhere. <laughs> you remember Judith, we did this meditation that I suggested where you go on a star and like feel the eternity. So as soon as you get there, it's kind of all this world life with these small actions and deeds and goals it kind of becomes so irrelevant. You just want to sit there and enjoy this love and stillness and peace and <laughs> enjoy this eternity, <laughs> nowhere else to go. So that's the primary difference for me that I can emphasize in between awakened mind and evolved mind patterns. I think you're right. I, I think that, that what I was describing might very well be evolved mind and an awakened mind is a very different experience it's like the difference between if evolved mind is a sphere awakened mind is the center of the sphere it, it like takes you there it, you're right there and you say aha, aha that's it i've got it now it's a very different feeling and, and then yeah. and you go i don't care about it <laughs> it's more like it's it's uh, Jesus, it's like you can also make a comparison like awakened mind it's your earthly mind you know at its best performance right and yes. then when you get to evolved mind it's your soul it's your eternal soul with eternal perspective at things so this is different perspective right and different kind of speed and feeling behind it sensation behind it <laughs> right oh right oh that's nice oksana then i'd like to thank garth as far as i know garth also has some intuitive abilities and he used to work with people as a social worker and what I learned and would like to thank him for uh, is for his deep knowledge of people and heart wisdom. Actually, Garth has been featured on programs before where we've looked at his brainwaves. It might have been in one of the case studies, what folios, um, but he's just a lovely person and we're going to love it when he gets headphones and a better camera for his computer. He moves around a lot, so 
<laughs> basically you see this picture of somebody who's making trails he is an intuitive and uh, as Oksana said a lot of heart wisdom so we really appreciate him and thank him and hope to see him here on lots more programs uh, if you go back maybe to I think it was last year he is famous for his uh, channeling through gamma about gamma <laughs> It was with one of our programs. I don't exactly remember which program that was. That was it. That was it. And then uh, he uh, was our special uh, guest and speaker talking about neurotransmitters. Uh, so I think it's an interesting topic to explore. So if you are interested, uh, scroll the video gallery. How did you get started on this meditative or spiritual path? Mine got started at 14 in the back pew of a Baptist church in a small town in Indiana. <laughs> I got the end. Something came into my mind that said what I needed to do was understand as much as I could. The more I understood, the better I could live and eventually help people. Seeking that understanding has been going on for 60 years now. That's a really fascinating way to have gotten started that basically you heard a voice or... or it was a knowing or a, it wasn't a voice. It was just something that came in, I'm sure, from my intuition. Now I'd like to say thank you to Doug for searching inquisitive mind. I should say you can clearly see lots of intelligence and lots of questions. Typical researcher... <laughs> And I have a funny little fragment of Doug introducing himself. This is Doug. I always have questions. <laughs> and we don't always have answers. We mostly have questions too. So together, <laughs> between the answers that crop up as we ask the questions and come along later, uh, we're all in this together and we appreciate that you have questions. So do we. Thank you. I also would like to thank Robert for sharing uh, his own stories and useful working tips. Robert has been working with uh, brain waves and brain wave training for a long, long while. And he has lots of insights coming from the field of hypnotherapy, which might be useful for anybody doing meditation and mind mirror work. It occurs to me that Doug and Robert, several other people could lead a webinar and we could find out more of what they know. We could call it wisdom from the mind mirror community and we would definitely welcome that. Thank you for your presence and participation. I picked the fragment where he shares his personal story of how he ended up starting hypnotherapy. And that's one of these magic or mystery of your soul plan, how it unfolds and how it takes you there. When it comes to my drive for awakening, that's been with me my whole life since I was a child. We're trying to understand the nature of the universe, my place here, and what, what I am to do and become. So that comes from a different level. I feel like it's a soul impulse. Bob here again. Somebody said something about the influences on us. Oh, you've got to have an Apple Watch. Well, do I really need an Apple Watch? Do I really need a new iPad or a new iPhone? So a lot of these desires are implanted because corporations understand through motivational and research into what brings about changes in people. They know how to advertise to access the subconscious mind and plant desires. So that's one level. But in terms of our highest one, which I think you were addressing, how do we really know which of the ones that are really important for us? Uh, let me just relate what happened to me. I've been studying hypnosis at the, what I considered the best schools all over the United States. And it was gathering information. There were some people in Detroit therapists in the Detroit, Michigan area who were begging me to start a program and teach them what I did. And I felt inadequate for it. These were people who were already licensed counselors and whatever, and PhD psychologists. And I really didn't. And I wore out more shoes dragging, being dragged along. So I finally, I went to a person who I respected, who does hypnosis and using a process that's called idiodynamic signaling. It bypasses the cerebral cortex thinking mind and able to connect him with the higher levels of consciousness with the yes and no binary communication. So I had two questions for him. One, am I supposed to do this thing at all? And if I am, the date that's come to mind is October 16th. 
And I had so much resistance to it, I was sure that the answer was going to come back no. But I was in a deep state of hypnosis, and he said the answer came back yes to both of them. So that's one way I know in the work I do of accessing those levels is in a deep state, connecting in with the higher mind through an idiodynamic process, and then asking questions about whether this is a fruitful past. Is there any part of me that's holding back that from manifesting? So, and then you just go from there and find the wounded parts or the parts that hold contrary beliefs, release the emotional charge from them, look at the beliefs around the experiences of reform that make the feelings of inferiority or not being worthy or fear of being burned to the stake again from a past again. life. Again. <laughs> and so you, you clear those out and do soul retrieval as necessary and the way becomes clear then to bring that, manifest that in. I'd like to thank Jim Lewis for his love of meditation, for his great brain waves that apparently we have seen <laughs> more than once <laughs> during our programs. And of course, his gratitude to Judith. And in my little fragment that I prepared, I picked the moment when Jim is thanking Judith for her meditation recordings. I wish I could put you in my pocket and take you around with me. That was an excellent <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that anytime I can get it and thank you very much you're the best <laughs> oh, I really like that joke I'm just happy to be part of the community have a wonderful time and I helped develop Sam especially my annual modulation music and if anybody wants to try to figure out how that works <laughs> he's taken me to one of my most profound experiences with 120 hertz gamma <laughs> which we'll save that story for another time but certainly uh, we could get uh, Bob Holbrook and Jim to share that webinar and talk about it because we are going to have some binaural beats options in the mind mirror portal for guided and non-guided meditation so we definitely would want to introduce people who may not know about that to it and Jim I don't need to say anything about Jim except I love you <laughs> <laughs> I also would like to thank Joel Mitchell from France I wish he could be more often with us but he's too too busy pursuing his other career as a coach and peace worker anytime when uh, Joel has a chance to speak in our program it's a uh, always the voice of truth the voice of deep with wisdom and a big healing heart he had healing experience himself and that's what you will hear in a little fragment that i prepared reminds me of my own self-healing journey really i think what started me understanding that we have this healing power and the power to transmit energy here is another uh, slide with Arne, where we would like to thank him for coming to uh, our community. And I think not only me was touched by his introduction and his ability and uh, eagerness to, to share his uh, experience, his meditative experience and his insights, including the insights about Awaken Mind Meditations, Judith Meditations, and Anavises Meditations. And that's what I invite you to watch in a fragment with Arne. And what I noticed is that in some of uh, yours, Judith, and, and uh, also Anna's meditations, um, I was able to see the subconscious minds, which were really at, at a low, uh, beliefs, which were kind of the deeper beliefs triggering me in my daily life so i would be really interesting to see how in these meditations one could get access to to the subconscious mind in in staying conscious so that you do know what's coming up and that you can change and replace the programming i guess that would be words which they use in data healing and in bruce lipton's work and so I I'm, I'm, would be really interested to see how the the MM6 together with you know beads or can can help us really getting this as a more established program because I believe there's there's healing.
And here is one more self-trainer from the community, Wayne, who uh, will amaze you after you watch the fragment, if you haven't watched the program with his participation. Uh, he really found a creative approach to hook up while we're working for uh, sailing electrodes and other solutions to simplify the hookup. He did it. He just bought a special razor and cut uh, sports on his head for the electrodes to go. <laughs> so he was the one who really did it. And what I did is I went out uh, and bought a certain kind of a, a pen hair shaver that I just, you know, and uh -huh. Try to make shave little spaces where the electrodes would go, and then stick it where it's close to being a way to the skin. There, just that's and, fantastic. You they're did it. They're imperceptible, <laughs> but you can once you've created them, they stay for you know a couple of days. I just want to remind you that it would be very lovely. I'll do my best to update the I am community page that we have. Uh, I have created a special form. So here is the link and I'll send you the link with the recording of this program. Thank you again to all of you for being here, for finding time. Judith, I invite you to speak about our special project, research and events from uh, 2019. Well, um, if you haven't had a look at um, the latest issue of Eureka Times, <clears throat> which has uh, uh, more of a detailed look at what we were doing there. Um, I can just say in short that uh, Ed Edwards is a pretty famous healer and he and his lady friend, uh, an Israeli woman who's living in uh, Long Island, were both at the Rhine Research Center. Uh, Ed is tested there pretty frequently in their biophoton lab, which is measuring uh, the healer's output of energy in the form of uh, photons of ultraviolet light uh, through the use of a photomultiplier. So um, Andrew Tang and uh, Rachel Almond and I all went there straight from uh, TMI program and measured their brain waves uh, as they were doing it. And so there's a new study up on the uh, I am website, Institute for the Awakened Mind .com website, <clears throat> excuse me, under the uh, research page and then the Mind Mirror Studies page. There's a link to it in the Eureka Times uh, that details the study. But essentially, um, we did three different uh, hookups, uh, one of which was on Ed and me simultaneously in the Biophoton Lab. And it was absolutely fascinating uh, to see from uh, in a preliminary way uh, that it looked to me like when John Cruth, the director of the Rhine Research Center, which is extremely famous, the leading parapsychology lab in possibly the world, um, was seeing uh, the largest number of biophotons, we were, we were seeing the largest amount of gamma. So it looked to us like a direct correlation. We won't know for sure until John uh, crunches the biophoton numbers, which is apparently a substantial job. But the preliminary uh, part of the study, which was the mind mirror aspect of it, is up on the website. And it's also up in Eureka Times. And it, the Eureka Times article is quite fascinating if you have any interest in healing whatsoever, because it's also talking about the new copper wall room at the Monroe Institute and how Ed Edwards produced 70 volts of um, electrical potential in the copper wall room, whereas most people are producing less than one, two, three, four at the most. Uh, so yeah, I would just encourage you to take a look at Eureka Times. It's on the imevents.tilda.ws slash news is the page for it and um, we're excited I mean I've been wanting to do this for years and years and we will go back um, the Rhine Center has uh, 
a new mind mirror that a mind mirror owner who had passed away he has a, left him a mind mirror six and he also has two mind mirror threes so um yeah uh, we can definitely put the link in the chat uh it's a really great story uh from different perspectives um, shows the mind linking that happens from healer to healer which by now is absolutely proved in several studies that are up on that mind mirror studies page as well as in this one all right so um this is another hugely important uh stride for us um, i went to the open center in new york city uh, in late 2017 and monitored the brain waves along with mind mirror coach laura eichmann of eight people each of us had four people and we monitored them over Saturday and Sunday. And basically what we found is that um, certainly emotional freedom technique, which you probably know is tapping where you say, even though I you know, am upset with myself or having failed at a task, I love and appreciate myself. And what you're doing is interrupting thought processes by tapping on the acupuncture points and the meridians, it's incredibly, uh, efficacious, especially for people who have trauma and uh, deep-seated uh, patterns of consciousness that they can't seem to change. And so he was, Dawson Church was a big EFT guru um, and a best-selling author, uh, did this program, but he also included in it eco-meditation. And this is something that he compiled from a lot of different uh, techniques such as resonant heart, well, EFT, a little bit of EFT tapping at the beginning, but then mostly uh, resonant frequency breathing, heart, brain coherence, and then just sending out energy, compassion to oneself and then to others. And what we found was that uh, people who had had kind of uh, disorganized and unstable brainwave patterns in the light of that energy uh, suddenly went into coherence and people who had had pretty good brainwave patterns to start with left that weekend with uh, an eyes open awakened mind pattern they got so relaxed and so um, elevated over the course of just two days that they vastly increased their awakened mind and gamma synchrony, even evolved mind statistics, and uh, felt much more relaxed and peaceful. And uh, it's very unusual to see those, it's unheard of, frankly, to see strides in consciousness and in uh, physiology, psychophysiology, in such a short period of time. So I wrote the study up and Dawson published it. Uh, it went to a board uh, to be peer reviewed and they thought it was be worthy and it was published in the Energy Psychology Journal. And um, I've, many of you know that I've said this before, um, one of my key goals uh, in this work that I do with Institute for the Awakened Mind and the Mind Mirror Six is to get more studies published because that's how the mind mirror gets out of the old mindset that, set that we're just subjectively interpreting and therefore what we say can't be trusted. This is how we have already uh, risen up out of that perception uh, of our work uh, by going to quantitative measurements through our various um, techniques and tools. And in fact, as you'll see, we're training doctors and researchers now. Uh, so, so what this is, is a, a foundation. If you want to put legs on, on the mind mirror work, one leg for me, uh, at least, is to get more research out there so that we get more credibility in the scientific field. And of course, our work with, with the uh, Monroe Institute is part of that, part of that work. Um, and we're getting way closer to being able to publish for the Monroe Institute now. Um, another leg would be development of mind mirror itself. Another one would be training more and more practitioners. 
And as you're going to see in January program, if you want a fourth leg, uh, I'd say that that's going to be the mind mirror portal. And we'll talk about that toward the end of this program. So this was a big stride. Very excited to have it. There's like a 16 pages it takes up in here. It's showing all the screens, explaining how the mind mirror works, how we derive our statistics. It's really in depth. Uh, it laid a foundation for many more studies like this. Yeah, and so just to continue with that, to say that um, there's a new study up on the website now uh, of the August 2019 discovery program, and uh, it is very interesting because more and more we're seeing uh, people go out of body in these flat brainwave, nearly flat. I mean, this is a three microvolt pattern here. Um, and then before the OBE, you see all this uh, amplitude in the pattern. Uh, this pattern is, this person is showing, uh, in fact, Jim, I think this is your pattern, <laughs> um, showing a high amplitude awakened mind uh, pattern. We're looking at a pattern that's almost an evolved mind. It's got a lot of amplitude there on the right pattern in theta uh, and an upturned delta. And so that's at 15 microvolts. And so if you look at the pattern on the left, the out of body, that's a massive decrease. And we saw that uh, for some reason a lot in the August program. So that was just one of many highlights. Um, for the Monroe Institute, what these studies are proving is that the gamma really is uh, increasing uh, consciousness, evolving consciousness, and helping people move into altered states where they can uh, access targets and correctly identify them. Um, and for us, it's proving over and over and over again our 50-year-old, almost 50-year-old uh, database of principles, awakened mind principles. and how consciousness evolves because that out-of-body pattern is exactly what we expected to see. Um, we just happen to have seen it more in this last program for some reason, but these studies uh, with the Monroe Institute, and there's another one up on the website under Mind Mirror Studies that has um, shows you uh, other, other things that we understand. Uh, more than anyone else, of course, because we're the consciousness researchers of the world. Um, but it helps TMI uh, structure their program and add content to their sound beats. Uh, and it certainly is fascinating to us because this work with the Monroe Institute and the Ryan Institute, this is where we're on the continuing to be on the frontiers of consciousness exploration. Nobody else, in fact, is doing studies uh, with large groups of people uh, in gravity chair, anti gravity chairs, listening to binaural beats while they're hooked up to EEG. As far as we can tell, nowhere else in the world is anything like this going on. So when we do publish this research, it is going to absolutely set people on their ears, the whole um, scientific community, because we're, we're going to be looking at. Uh, is the very definition of non-dual states of consciousness. What does that mean? Where is that happening in the brain? What stimulates it? What are the outcomes? And we've got now the numbers to be able to publish studies. And as of recently, TMI now has a research assistant who's already getting busy uh, pulling our statistics, our very carefully preserved on Dropbox statistics and patterns and VEF files and everything. And they're starting to uh, phrase the questions and they're starting to uh, look at the data itself. So we're really excited about our work with them. And we already have two programs planned for 2021 in March, end of March and one in, I believe, October. Uh, the homepage of the website gives you links uh, and gives you those dates. So I just encourage any 
member of the mind mirrors community it's it's not inexpensive uh to come to the monroe institute but it might be some of the best money you ever spend to listen to those binaural beats and travel and there's a very very high incidence of success in remote viewing and out of body uh, with these sam beats especially because it's over a period of you know five days so it's an intensive where there's a cumulative effect and a buildup of um, higher states of consciousness. Yeah, so come if you can. Join us if you can. If you can't, please enjoy the studies. Yeah. Um, there I am in the background being interviewed. Frankly, I didn't do a great job in the interview because my answers were just longer than a half a sentence she wanted bites i'm good with the bites <laughs> um, but maybe she can parse something out of it that's sonia Bar barcala uh, and her cameraman so what happened uh, i tell about it in the story uh, that's in this issue of eureka time so i'll only say the tiny bit right now uh, essentially sonia knew a psychologist um, Laurence uh, Lucas Scali, uh, Belgian, not psychologist, psychiatrist, who attended the February 2019 program at TMI with a friend, and they came back raving about it. And Sonia said, wait a minute, that's documentary material. And so she came to the August program and they shot a bunch of footage. And it is indeed starring the mind mirror, because as I said, these programs are not happening anywhere else in the world. What are the brain waves of a remote viewing person who hits the target? Well, that's pretty cool stuff. And so she did interviews with everybody at TMI involved with the, with the work. So, so that's very cool. It's going to come out and more people will hear about us that way. Maybe we'll put a fifth leg on that stool <laughs> uh, of the important things to us. I think Cecilia asked what's the link to the news page. So now in the bottom right corner, you can see the news page link and you'll find the news page link from just a uh, home uh, page of I am events tilde WS events website. So now we are proud to say we have 11 issues and uh, we are not as productive as we used to be last year, but at least uh, Judith, and I, with a little help of me, uh, put together the major news, the ones that uh, Judith just presented to you. You can find nicely illustrated articles uh, in our Eureka Times newsletter. So basically it's another uh, page that will update you on what studies are coming out uh, about the film. And there is one more beautiful article about Judith's trip to China. Okay, so here is a slide uh, with the, presenting the next blog about uh, Awakened Mind Practitioner trainees from 2019. It says, beautiful people, exciting possibilities. So, you know, the thing about this uh, increased research and having this mind mirror six with this data analysis is it really attracts people who are a combination of mystical and mystically minded, you know, have a strong spiritual underpinning uh, and also scientifically oriented. People want the data. They want to be able to prove what's really happening. And that was the case here uh, in January when I went to Melbourne, Australia and trained seven practitioner trainees. Uh, here you see a photo of um, Fred Swan, who is a network chiropractor uh, who's in partnership with John Hare and in a moment you'll see his picture is beautiful beautiful center um, with you know porches and a whole separate studio so there's a close-up of Fred um, the cool thing about his practice is that uh, it's not just network chiropractic but he does neurofeedback and biofeedback assessments he has all kinds of equipment uh, to do that with and um, he even has an eye awake sound room, relaxation room, where you go and listen to their binaural beats. There's a whole room with his really comfortable chairs. He trains chiropractors. So for us, 
the relevance is that he is spreading the word about the mind mirror because he's including the mind mirror in his trainings for chiropractors. Uh, so everyone who uh, is training with Fred is going to be training in the mind mirror to an extent. Uh, and, and he's also gathering research. All right. So uh, this is uh, Fred sitting there. He's the second from the left. This is his wife, Kay. Uh, you have this black spot in front of the people again. Um, and uh, this is Sarah Gale and Danny Eskoff. So I monitor. It was the first time I realized I could draw the brainwaves of seven people at a time. I had those four guys uh, on this left computer. And then if you go to the next slide, I had three more people on the right-hand computer. And it was really no problem at all. Uh, and it was just in time because right after this, we went to TMI and uh, I found myself having to draw the brain waves of eight people at a time. And luckily I already knew I could do it. So this is Conrallis. All three of these are network chiropractors. Here's John, who is Fred's uh, partner. And here's Jace McDonald. Uh, he's an IT person as well. Uh, this is just a hookup. It shows uh, Sarah and John hooking up Danny. They had so much fun. I don't know if any of you saw the movie, The Happy Hooker, but <laughs> pardon me, you guys. I couldn't resist it. The hooker uppers. Um, and then in June, uh, a friend of mine did a reading for uh, Daphne Anastasiu who is uh, an author in Chile, uh, psychotherapist, corporate specialist in human development, energy healer, and an author. And so at this point in the slides, I started including what were people's intentions. So I had to go back to my drawings and notes that I'd made during the training. And Daphne is just a delightful person. She wants to further explore her own super ordinary states of consciousness because she's had intuition, intuitive events, OBEs, all kinds of things, all her artistic life. But she also wanted to use the awakened mind language to explain her artistic process to audiences and the readers of her books. So again, this is someone who is promulgating through the Mind Mirror community, the sixth leg on that stool that we keep building, um, spreading the news, basically. Um, and I told you that we are getting more and more doctors in. Um, this was a funny experience for me because I was about to go visit my brother, Frank Bonifay, down in Louisiana when Jerry Titel got in touch with me and said he wanted to come for training. It could only be those days. And then when he told me he lived in Bonifay, Florida, I went, okay, well, I'm supposed to train him and not go see my my Frank Bonifay brother. And that's exactly what I did. And he was just an absolute delight, an anesthesiologist and corporate administrator and uh, his intention is to use the mind mirror to explore and teach other medical professionals about expanded and altered states of consciousness. So on that, the sixth leg of that stool, um, we have practitioners who are actually going to go out into the medical community and teach about the mind mirror. Um, so she's a delightful person. She's been on the webinars with us, Paula Puglisi. Uh, she has a neurofeedback practice uh, and she's a registered nurse. So she works with really uh, troubled uh, populations of people, autism, ADD, all sorts of difficulties, trauma, PTSD uh, here in Pennsylvania. Uh, and she's totally dedicated to the work and she's using it with her clients in her practice for peak performance and mind exploration. She's married to a doctor. So through Paula, this work is further getting into the medical field. We're ready. Mm -hmm. So Paula and Jerry uh, trained together. And then uh, later in the month of June came Erica Flint, this absolutely darling woman, uh, from Bellingham, Washington, who is a hypnotherapist. Um, she came with her publisher, a woman who owns uh, a publishing company, and had worked with Erica to publish three books of her, hers. And so the two of them were just high octane the whole time. It was one of those hilarious trainings that 
um, are so incredibly much fun. And of course, both of them had an enormous amount of wisdom and experience in consciousness development because they themselves were um, highly advanced and knew how to work with people. And one of Erica's strengths was she was a training and a trainer in mediation therapy. So a real uh, pro in working with people. Her intention is high performance training with hypnosis and the mind mirror. So she's bringing it into her work and will touch countless people as she does. Uh, Andrew Tang. Oh, you're going to be hearing so much and have heard so much about Andrew already. So Andrew went with me to the Rhine Institute and to um, China and was, wasn't happened to be in Hong Kong the same time I was. So that's how we connected up there. He's here right now doing his uh, seminars three and four. And, um, the reason you're going to hear more about Andrew is because he is uh, during, well, I'll tell you the story. During seminar one, Andrew's very quiet and soft-spoken and uh, Yanu viewers, you'll see uh, him at some point on a webinar and uh, Rachel Almond were in the same training. He was saying hardly a word. He was so quiet. But then on the third day, when we start talking about drawing brainwaves, Andrew says, I can see a way not to draw brainwaves. And I went, yeah, you and everybody else. <laughs> but in Andrew's case, he had overnight uh, developed a platform that all practitioners are going to want to have. Uh, that is, and I won't say too much more about it now because he's going to be lead a webinar on it in January, but a platform that is going to capture brainwave patterns for specific parts of meditations, which are going to be recorded by me in January and transcribed into software. Uh, and the brainwaves will be captured. No drawing of brainwaves is any longer any necessary necessary but this will also be great for self trainers because that capture will happen uh, into drawings that will be compiled people listening to the guided meditations uh, you'll be able to see specifically explicitly when you had what pattern and um, with great precision or in a compiled way in general there i mean i can't even begin to tell you all the fabulous things andrew has engineered um so he has a business he lives in new jersey uh close to me here in pennsylvania he has quantum healing hypnosis uh, and where he's also a software entrepreneur for avier tech um, co-developer of the mind mirror portal so we've made an agreement we've talked to steve War clark we may network with him and we may uh, very well uh, have this beta uh, level of the portal ready to go in uh, about three months, probably March, April. It's going to be a subscription for very little money and the power you're going to get out of your mind mirror. It's going to do all the data analysis for you. Everything is going to get very simple, filed your sessions by date. It's going to show you trends of how you're improving in your scores. It's just first class world, literally world class. So um, his intention is to use the mind mirror with his hypnosis clients to better serve them. And also through the portal and who knows what else he's going to think of to simplify and extend the capabilities of the mind mirror software. So um, just in your minds, give a warm round of applause for Andrew. <laughs> he's really doing great things for us. And so um, Jim Bray is another medical professional. Um, he is a, uh, the most beautiful man who has a wife who has had a stroke for 15 years and he has grown children and he has a, a mother in the 90s and he uses meditation to get him through life with grace and ease uh, and great insight in the same way that he did in the 1970s when he used TM to get himself through med school. He took a whole year off of med school. He said, this is just too stressful. I'm falling apart. Uh, and he learned TM 
and then he went back and just absolutely th flew through it. So he has been very convinced of um, the awakened mind since the 1970s and uh, now the Mind Mirror 6 uh, through his training. He could only stay for one uh, seminar, but he's totally coming back and has a Mind Mirror and he's going to use it to mitigate the stroke effects suffered by his wife and to introduce EEG led meditation to medical schools because he's an advisor, a high level advisor uh, to medical schools. And he is, uh, he's gonna, boy, if we can penetrate, <laughs> penetrate that discipline, think of how many people could be helped because now you're talking about the mind and the body uh, as one unit. And if, a doctor in med school can see uh, a demonstration of the mind mirror as being uh, a mirror of what's happening in the mind and the body and consciousness. Wow, that's going to go somewhere. Um, you are now looking at my very own daughter, Rachel Holman, who uh, joined this work uh, this year, first in July, and the training with Andrew and Yaniv, and uh, has become an assistant, an administrative assistant, and a helper creator for me. Everything from getting the very badly degraded meditation scripts for the practitioner trainers, trainees into beautiful shape to helping me with the cooking, the presentation, the hookups. Um, she's just right there. And she brings so much to this work. She's a visual artist, a singer, and a writer. Um, and just today, we were sitting down at the kitchen aisle and talking about, well, did we really need an intake form? And she had the idea. You know, we were trying to get around saying, um, what if somebody gets in trouble during trauma and you have to start a verbalized lead follow meditation with them. You know, should you have asked them what kind of environment you could take them to in the intake form? And she said, well, you could just ask them what it is that they uh, love to do. And of course that was, so the creative aspects that she's bringing into this work uh, are enormous. And um, of course she helped me train six <laughs> new practitioner kits that came in night before last. So boy, am I so happy to see her in this work and it's a natural for her. She's a natural counselor. Her goal is uh, to work with actually one of the most uh, stressed populations of all, and that's people with anxiety and addiction issues. And um, man, no other population needs help more than that one. So Yaniv, um, I couldn't show you a picture because we couldn't get in touch with him. He is with his girlfriend. They are tooling around in India, <laughs> hooking up uh, yogis at the moment and out of internet uh, connection. He is an NLP practitioner trainer, trainer and he's done theta healing work just a lovely young man. He's in his early thirties or maybe even his late twenties. I don't remember. Um, just a beautiful person. And look at his intention to help young Israeli soldiers heal from PTSD so that one healed person can heal another. So he's taking this into that, as we just said, uh, most uh, deserving and needing population. No doubt you'll meet him on a future webinar and you'll love him. Okay, Cecilia, she's on here. Um, if we see a picture of Cecilia, you'll see that she's really much prettier than this picture shows, but she liked that picture. Um, so I went with it, even though I'd taken a better one of her. Uh, she came in September and did seminars one and two and just a oh, rock and roll, funny, incredibly smart and perceptive person. Um, I hope that she will join us at TMI as she just hinted she might. And, uh, and that you'll see tons more uh, of her and about her. She's based in Austin, Texas. Uh, she's the medical director and founder of Quantum Heal. 
and um, her intention is to develop a program that will lead people to the true self and their pure potential and look at what she has in her toolkit using hypnosis, NLP, timeline therapy, nutrition, herbalism, uh, acupuncture, Ayurveda, and the mind mirror. And then this program, once she has it together, she's going to take it out into lectures and presentations. She's an absolute dynamo and so glad uh, that she's part of this work. Okay, um, so this was a real trip for me because I had never trained five people simultaneously before. And I knew that all of these people were very highly self-actualized. Now, Heidi Munn, uh, the person second from the left, was only there for seminar one. And um, she didn't buy a mind mirror and she wasn't going to take up this work. She just came for a few weeks before for an individual session and got so much out of it she wanted to get the mental mastery that she knew she'd get in the seminar one training so she was basically a visitor um, but she too was highly self-actualized so I knew we we're going to do a lot of talking it was going to be very exciting and how would I fit five people in my downstairs living room which is what you're looking at uh, there's a piano and there's a sofa to the far Right, and then we complicated it by having Andrea bring Sienna, who turned out to be a wonderful helper. She just sat on the sofa and observed things, pitched in uh, where she could. Uh, you see Arn, uh, we're gonna see a picture of him in a minute. Uh, and uh, we just ended up having the most wonderful training. We all fit in there beautifully and every got, everybody got along and um, added to everyone else's experience and really made sense of the concept of group synergy, you know, where it's more, uh, the group is more than the individuals and everyone's adding to everyone else's experience. Okay, now you know Andrea, and we'll certainly get ask her to uh, make some comments. She is another dynamo, holistic physician and acupuncturist, uh, qigong energy healer, medical doctor, uh, best-selling author, international teacher and speaker. She's done TED Talks. She's been on Oprah a couple of times. Uh, really, to perceive correctly perceive Andrea you would just want to go and watch that webinar uh, she has had powerful uh, spiritual awakening experiences that led her to a path that uh, is also as on the second uh, the sixth prong or leg of that stool I keep referring to going to take us into uh, into research so she wants to as her intentions teach about brain waves and states of consciousness and to publish research on meditators and patients so she's going to use the mind mirror um, and if anybody can publish it she can uh, she's just she could talk the skin off a snake i tell you what um, she is just high powered uh, lucid and uh, you know like Cecilia and and these other medical professionals I mean they literally make things happen and we're so grateful that you're part of this community Andrea would you like to say something uh, now hi everyone thank you Judith I don't know about talking the skin off a snake but <laughs> it's a funny <laughs> funny visual for me um, I'm just so grateful I'm so grateful that Joel well uh, I don't think I mentioned that during the webinar. He's the one that introduced us um, a year and a half ago. And I'm just so grateful to be um, amongst all of you amazing mind travelers and self actualizers. Um, I consider it a true gift. And wow, I'm so grateful actually for this presentation to kind of hear about uh, some of the folks that I didn't get to watch their videos yet. Um, this is a powerful community and I'm just really excited to, sh to do my part to share the mind mirror and all of the various techniques that we're all using to help people connect to that essential self to heal and to go beyond. So thank you. You know, that's fantastic. Um, and by talk the skin off a snake, well, this is the, the snake becomes so hypnotized by the content of what's being said that he says, oh, I'm just going to shed my skin and become a new snake. <laughs> ah, I like that. Okay. In the moment. And, you know, that's the kind of uh, 
ability you have to reach people and to touch them. Um, something occurs to me, I probably shouldn't say this, but I, I can't help it uh, because I didn't say it to Andrea and will now. So here we are with these five people plus Sienna. And one day Andrea's uh, chief of operations person was watching on Skype and and then the first day, Bethany was watching on Skype because she couldn't join us. So we had all these computers set up and we were just teched up. And people would be, oh, how do I do this? How do I get this with the software? And they'd be gathered over on one side of the room and there would be all these conversations that were going on. And, you know, there'd be a little stress and a little bit of high beta. And I look over at Andrea and Andrea was just sitting there. I'm totally focused on my computer. I'm going to figure this out for myself. Folk, <laughs> sustained awareness. She wasn't hearing anything that was going on on the other side of the room. She just, she would just go to her, go to this and go to that and find her own answers. And she stayed so wonderfully calm. And of course, this is the definition of a self-actualized person who has mental and emotional and spiritual mastery and uh it was just a it was beautiful to to watch you and so i just want to give you that feedback right now and say that thank you so i i have a 360 thing that i watch people and <laughs> you were just a joy you didn't get wrapped up in the <laughs> until it was time you know for a break and then you're wound up with everybody else but when it was work time you were absolutely on the money Thank you for Thank that. Thank you. A beautiful, calming presence. And Arn, now he's here with us today and we'll ask for his feedback. Um, we just love Arn. My goodness. Um, Arn, I have to tell you that I captured your photo here from uh, the webinar because it shows the light in your eyes and on your face and your beautiful smile. Um, I could have used a picture of you from when you were doing some sort of sports work from years ago, <laughs> but I wanted to show you more in your essence as you are now, because you have had a major uh, life change. Uh, Arne was uh, an internationally known medical researcher and uh, working with top pharmaceutical company or companies, and uh, he's German uh, by birth and was living in California. And he had some extraordinary experiences. Uh, he became a heart and math trainer, but uh, a spiritual awakenings, and uh, he tells about them. Please go to the uh, last webinar where we're talking about gathering the healing energy for transmission to others. Um, he's just had amazing experiences, and, and they've made him into an energy healer with a ton of gamma and uh, just these gorgeous brainwave patterns. And the spirit he just exudes. The other reason I love this picture is because oh, there's so much light around him, uh, and he is a fantastic healer. And, and Arn, um, I took this intention from something you said in uh, one of the feedback uh, talks. Uh, so if this is not an overriding intention, then you can correct that when we ask you to speak in a few moments. But what I took was to self-evolve and to help Jew the Jewish community immigrate back to Berlin because he really had some real heart connection with that situation in World War II. And, and then the other funny thing I'll tell you about Arn is I mentioned it on the last webinar. Arn um, did a mind link with a very persistent a woodpecker who was driving us crazy, uh, pecking in huge holes into the house. And um, he had this was his second day here, and he'd been going for about an hour in the tail end of our tra uh, training as we tried to close it. And we all broke, uh, ended the seminar, came upstairs, and um, this woodpecker was at it and he turned to me and said, would you like me to uh, talk to the, to heal the woodpecker? And I was thinking, oh, right. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> and Arn is, he's standing there and I think Andrea and I were talking and I was thinking we shouldn't be talking. We should just let him uh, w work on this woodpecker. So I, I had my mind in the conversation I was having, but I was watching Arn at the same time and the woodpecker's going, 
and then Arn's standing there for about three minutes and then the woodpecker starts slowing down and then he slows down and there's more and more distance between the pecking and then he stops and he disappeared and he never came back and what Arn said was that um, he had in the conversation with the woodpecker um, he had suggested to him that he go and peck a tree and the woodpecker had said well no he didn't want to hurt the tree and then Arn said something tantamount to well you know that's what you're supposed to do or talk to the tree or something you can clarify that Arn but the woodpecker disappeared so I totally believe that he's got some energy healing power <laughs> besides you know the healings that he told us about how phenomenal that uh, he can talk with animals so basically, while we're waiting for the slide to come up, just to say the caliber of people, and Bethany's one, she's here right now uh, studying. She's a biofeedback specialist from Albany, New York, and the founder of Global Peaceful Cities Project. I would just encourage you to look this up. She's got a phenomenal thing she's doing. Basically what uh, the Maharishi Institute and James Twyman did, uh, only in a more controlled, ex well, I don't want to say more controlled experiment, um, in a more uh, segmented, discreet way, uh, and repeating the experiments where meditators send healing to a specific city, uh, and they check, and she's already got uh, results from one city that sure enough the crime rate went down by 25 percent and she's been doing this for years and years she's going to use the mind mirror in some way uh, to uh, quantify what's going on in people's brain waves as they do this work and uh, she'll tell us about it in february she's going to be the guest speaker for the february 2020 uh, program and uh, she also wants to train uh, s states of consciousness and peak performance for lawyers um, I don't know why she's focused on lawyers in particular but sh maybe because she knows some and they have been extremely receptive um, she's also one of those dynamo go-getters where she's already since she's been here in <laughs> four days uh, written up this fabulous brochure uh, for lawyers targeted to them so so she is bringing out uh, not just medical professionals, but lawyers. Uh, so that leg of the stool is multi-pronged and into the professional regions. Next, it's going to be corporations. Somebody will go to corporations only, and then we will be penetrating, hopefully, lots of different disciplines. And Christian, um, he is such a treat. He called me like two days before the training started and he had had a dream and uh, he had been in his float tank and he saw very clearly that he should come to the training. And so he just booked a flight and came right in and he ended up being our first fifth person. <laughs> there was, that was the point at which I was thinking, how am I gonna fit all these desks and chairs into this not so great room? worked perfectly um, he was a wonderful lead. he's a quiet person and uh, what he wants to do is help people uh, expand their consciousness and in order to further ex enhance the float experience so he's going to use the mind mirror either before people float or after people float or some combination and I guess you know what the float tank business is where you're suspended in uh, salinated heavily salinated water in a sensory deprivation environment uh, that helps you really be focused only on yourself no outside distractions uh, and all sorts of phenomenal altered states of consciousness thus become possible so uh, he's going to quantify that and i would be very curious to see once he starts doing uh, sessions whether that ends up being a good mind neuro studies research paper yeah so he's he's a lovely person and we really welcome him to the, our ranks 
All right, Oksana. Yes, yeah, since uh, this was my student, I'll say a few words. So, uh, Carly uh, Jan, he comes from Sydney, Australia. And the way he wanted to present himself uh, is uh, adventurer in consciousness and transformational coach. So from what I learned uh, while working with him, he uh, has great experience in all kinds of, you know, consciousness trainings and energy work. So he done lots of work with the body, lots of work uh, with uh, uh, binaural bits and other programs. And he was looking for something that will help him to self-train uh, more though when I hooked him up I instantly could see tons of gamma like tons of gamma but uh, the basic challenge for us was to organize his gamma <laughs> Judith knows what it is like <laughs> I mean uh, I, I always uh, say or at least that's how I see it, that gamma people they are very energetic and they have powerful fields you know but it's very important to make sure that these fields are uh, constructive and friendly. And basically, it's very hard for gamma auna when gamma gets, you know, out of the control. So uh, I hope uh, he got the advice and uh, he's training um, gamma synchrony actively. Uh, hopefully with Evolve My Important to help him get more balanced and grounded. And his main goal uh, is to not only uh, improve his, uh, you know, brain function, which is already, you know, quite impressive, but also to uh, use My Mirror for his coaching and training practice because they run also some circles uh, with his uh, girlfriend. So here we go. And another young person, may I point out. So this is great. <laughs> it's not just us older people and people making, you know, career changes. There's a lot of young people coming into this work as well. Um, how sweet is this? Okay. 20, um, what was it? 22, 23. Yeah. 20, yeah. Uh, maybe I missed it. I don't know. It was the number I think you gave me. <sighs> Our missing piece. I mean, Anna trained uh, 135 people over 10 years and certified 65 of them. Uh, and on our website, there are only about, we're only about 20 active uh, Mind Mirror practitioner trainers. Uh, well, not even that many. Let's say that there were maybe 20, 25 people who would even do sessions and they're scattered all around the world. If we continue to train people at this rate, our numbers are going to be uh, much greater. And of course, people will spread uh, awareness of this work, not to mention help a lot of people. <laughs> so, so I'm just thrilled. I had no idea there were that many. I knew I worked really, really, really hard all, all year. But once I counted them up, I um, was just delighted to see. Uh, and the caliber, you know, of all these people. Researchers, as we said, you know, highly self-actualized professionals who are going to take this into lots of new disciplines and uh, do great things for the world. Thank you, one and all. We honor you. And uh, now I'd like to give uh, some insight into the next year. Uh, Judith already mentioned, um, uh, not necessarily we'll have programs in this order. These are just the topics. So Judith, if you don't mind, I'll comment on uh, what we have in mind for next year. Thank you. So Judith mentioned New Mind Mirror Data Portal. Uh, that uh, is being actively developed with, by Andrew Tan. And apparently as soon as uh, it is ready to be presented, we'll come up with a program announcing that and explaining what and how. And then uh, Judith mentioned Bethany and her peace project. I'm sure everyone would be interested to learn more about her findings and how through 
uh, meditation and the mind mirror uh, she is working on improving the criminal situation and peace or what else she is doing uh, with this project uh, then there will be a few topics inspired by our previous programs meditation versus prayer uh, different paths to healing and spirituality. I'm looking into uh, interviewing uh, a person who will be perfect to ask about, you know, what God is from a uh, classical or traditional religious point of view and uh, what's in common between meditation and prayer because um, he is the former priest of the Orthodox Church who uh, left the church at certain stage realizing that like any other institution it was too limiting to who he's truly, he, he, he truly is and he wanted to open up to basically bigger world of uh, other traditions, other practices and uh, he's a great speaker uh, I have to figure out about his knowledge of English, but he clearly will be able to talk about uh, similarities of meditation and prayer on and where we can find true healing and spirituality because currently he's working as a, a soul therapist uh, and uh, a psychotherapist. So then uh, I would like to invite my... Uh, teacher who introduced Anna Weiss's work to me during one of transpersonal workshops. He's the pioneer of transpersonal psychology in Russia. His name is Vladimir Maikov. He now switched more to making documentaries and interviewing highly spiritual and intelligent people like Dalai Lama, Deepak Chopra, Ken Wilber, Robert Walsh, uh, Stanislaw Grof, and I can like continue the list. It's a long, long list of quite well-known and prominent people that uh, he was interviewing about human evolution. So uh, he has a great story himself, how he uh, was searching for the truth uh, for himself, how he was trying to connect with the source with the God to connect with infinity and eternity and he was uh, trying or still is trying to put together the new maps for humanity uh, to evolve and of course not just maps but the instruments of how we can get there it's not just one path like meditation he found many paths and he found the core kind of common core to all the paths that I would like to invite him and talk about. He has good knowledge of English and no problem in uh, delivering a great speech on that. And then another probably interesting topic to any, everybody who likes uh, Lewis Carroll and his stories, Journey to the Subconscious and the Awakened Mind Training through uh, Alice in Wonderland. So I plan to do a little bit of analysis and presentation on that. Then we decided that we need a program on ABC of the Awakened Mind training so uh, that everyone who buys the Mind Mirror or just thinking is thinking of buying the Mind Mirror will better understand uh, where we stand with the Mind Mirror as a neuro and biofeedback device. What's, what are the kind of peculiarities of our training? What's the basics of our theory? What's the major difference between, I don't know, self-training program and practitioner's work? I think it's important to know these basics so that there are no kind of questions or frustrations along the way. <laughs> uh, I'm sure that all of you have uh, read a lot on meditation or uh, related areas to meditation and well-being and consciousness so it would be interesting uh, to make a program where everyone could contribute and come up with the top of the mind research on uh, meditation like uh, that Maharishi research for example or uh, the research that uh, our awakened mind training is based on where lash scale is coming from and other things uh, then there is a program energy management energy readings i'm personally interested and have always been interested in psyche readings and how it happens and how it works so 
I want to summarize my own vision of how it works and present it to you. Uh, my terminology for that is not psyche, but more like energy reading. And then, uh, of course, we can always expand more on technical side of things like biofeedback therapy with the mind mirror from uh, biofeedback practitioners and clinical cue uh, that you still are able to do with the mind mirror ballistas if you are trained in neurofeedback. So it would be nice to learn the basics for those who are not neurofeedback practitioners in IAM community. It would be interesting to have past life regression working group. I also have in mind uh, having few psych uh, readers and healers in my area and it's rich, it's full of like lots of people with ESP abilities. Uh, I want to hook them up and interview them. So if I find time to do that, you'll find I hope good series of programs on being becoming a psych healer, a reader, what it is, how they found their abilities, how can they, how they can describe the states uh, when they are in process of healing or reading. So basically this is the overview and Judith, if you would like to add more words to that, you're very welcome. It's wise to say that that's the plan. <laughs> that's not necessarily yeah. the actuality because um, we're open to ideas from people for programs. And uh, if we have an opportunity to interview or have some uh, fascinating person uh, lead a webinar, certainly we will do that. If you're looking for best moments that we prepared, once again, I'll put it along with the best moments from just next to it somewhere on top of the video gallery. That's where you'll be able to find it. That's great because um, it's, it's really worth watching. Um, what it is, is that we've taken uh, segments, uh, features, short features, no more than three minutes to five minutes from a bunch of different speakers uh, from the 2019 webinars. And uh, some of them are funny. Uh, some of them, one segment I'm showing the pioneering understanding that we've had of consciousness from the Monroe Institute studies, just a few of them. Um, uh, but mostly it's wisdom voiced by the webinar uh, attendees. And uh, of special interest uh, is how to manifest your desires and uh, how to get in touch with your, uh, your winning mindset. And so it's great stuff for going into 2020. You know, it's absolutely appropriate for right now. Thank you for staying with us from webinar to webinar and in this one too. And we want to wish you very, very happy holidays and a wonderful uh, new year. May your celebrations be rich and beautiful and happy and fulfilling and all of your dreams for 2020 come true. Oh, I can only uh, join with your words and thank uh, everyone today and thank everyone who will be watching it because I feel that energy feedback coming from you when you are giving us attention, you're giving attention to our video programs and it feeds me back to continue and feeds us back to continue and come up with more inspiring topics and programs and I guess it also draws more and more new people into the circle and vortex of I am community. So mm -hmm. let's just say that we are not far. We are just an email and Zoom, uh, Zoom call away. <laughs> and let's stay in touch and let's stay together and stay in awakened minds. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're awake to our further awakening. Yes and see you next time. Happy holidays. Happy New Year.